I've always believed that ants are among the top most captivating organisms on the planet. And over the past 14 years that I've been creating videos of my ant colonies on this channel, living within their prodigiously crafted ant farms and terrariums, together we've marveled at how intelligent, resourceful, mighty, aggressive, and diverse ants truly are. But if there's one lesson we've learned time and time again, to really appreciate the true brilliance of ants, one needs to see them within the context in which they exist in the real world. You see, there's just something about seeing ant colonies living like they would out in the wild, interacting with real elements in their environment, hunting and killing prey, forming important symbioses with other creatures like springtails that have a pact with the ants to eat and clean up the ants' garbage. In nature, ants come face to face with other species of ants, and usually it's overlapping foraging trails, and on rare occasions, a full-out ant war over nesting territory and hunting rights. It's undeniable that watching ants in nature in a more true-to-life way is insightful and fascinating on a whole new level. Don't get me wrong, keeping ant colonies alone in an ant farm or terrarium like we usually do is an utter delight. But keeping pet ants in this way is still seeing a limited picture of the ants, like eyeing a tiny set of pixels that actually belong to a greater, more complex and beautiful ecological tableau to which the ants actually belong in the world. Now for years, so many of you AC family, you awesome subscribers to the channel, have requested and pleaded for me to produce an ultimate ecosystem tank, a vivarium as they call it. But time and time again, I've dismissed entertaining such a request, mostly because I felt like I wasn't ready to tackle a project of such scale. I mean, how does one realistically assemble an entire ecosystem within a glass setup? with just the right balance of plants, fungi, prey creatures, predators, parasites, detritivores, decomposers, etc. Sure, you could create what is called a community terrarium by simply throwing in a bunch of organisms and plants into a tank, seeing how they interact. And many people have already done that. But for me, this is not a true ecosystem tank. In fact, technically, I don't think anyone could create a true ecosystem tank unless the tank itself was massive. And I mean the size of a room massive. The reason? Creatures, especially larger ones, need space to thrive, breed, and establish territory. And the bigger the enclosure, the more likely you are to create what resembles an ecosystem tank. Okay, but what about an ecosystem-like vivarium? Hmm. Now this could be possible. I began to think further. Now in my old ant room, creating such an ecosystem vivarium was simply unfeasible because I just didn't have the space for a huge tank. But now that we have moved into our new ant room 2.0, I do actually have the space at my disposal now. I knew, however, creating the ultimate ecosystem vivarium would require me to apply my greatest of terrarium building skills and put my knowledge and experience of biology and animals to the test and would be the most ambitious terrarium build I've ever done. But what finally pushed me to ultimately decide to take on an ecosystem vivarium project of such scale was this. After some thought, I realized that creating the ultimate ecosystem vivarium from an antkeeper standpoint could allow me to circumvent two very golden ethical rules of ant keeping that I usually never break. First, many of you long to see our ant colonies form hunting parties to kill living prey. But ethically, I always felt it was cruel to place living prey insects into an ant farm with no chance of escape or way to defend themselves like they would in nature. So I've always fed pre-killed feeder insects to minimize the suffering. But in an ecosystem vivarium, the prey insects would have more of a fighting chance, more space to run away and places to hide. And only the weakest and less apt prey insects would end up being killed by the ants. That would be just natural selection. 
which ethically, I could jive with. Second, many of you over the years have also requested for me to mix ant colonies together into a single enclosure to see what would happen. But again, ethically for me, this was cruel and tantamount to cockfighting as the losing weaker ant colonies would have no place to retreat if they wanted to. But in an ultimate ecosystem vivarium, with an ample amount of space, weaker ant colonies finding themselves in an altercation with other more powerful colonies could have a fair chance to retreat to safety if they needed to, much as weaker ants would in the wild. Another advantage I foresee is that the ant colonies in an ecosystem type vivarium would have natural population regulators as some ants could fall prey to predators like frogs, lizards, or spiders. So the colonies wouldn't be able to just grow and grow unchecked, which has happened to me in the past. So, in light of all of this, I finally decided the time was now to give this ecosystem vivarium build a try. So I see family, for all of you who've been wanting for years for me to create the ultimate ecosystem vivarium, those of you who've been requesting for me to mix my ant colonies together in a single enclosure, and indeed, even those of you who've wanted to see the ants hunting and killing live prey, and not just pre-killed insects handed to them on a plate, I'm pleased to announce that I am finally ready to take on the challenge in the name of science and document what would happen if I placed multiple ant colonies in one massive ecosystem type vivarium. With this project, we'll finally get to marvel at the true brilliance of the ants in their natural element, within the context in which they exist in the real world. This is part one of creating an ecosystem vivarium ruled by several ant colonies of mine, but the ants will not have it easy. For the first time, they will have to contend with the elements, predators, hunting challenges, dangers, and each other. Will we be able to build the ultimate ecosystem vivarium? Will the various ant colonies we choose to place into our grand ecosystem thrive, or will they falter at the hands of the vivarium? It's time we lay the groundwork and find out. Welcome to the story of how I build the ultimate ecosystem vivarium for ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Guys, it's my greatest honor to start this huge ant vivarium project with you all, as I've been waiting for just the right time to begin. And I figured there couldn't be a better time to embark on such a vivarium building journey with you guys than now, as it would be the perfect celebration of reaching 5 million subscribers on the channel. At the time of creating this first episode, there are a little over 21,000 subscribers left until we hit that milestone. So guys, my hope is that the AC family finally reaches 5 million subs at some point during the course of this long-awaited ant ecosystem series, for which I have some very big and exciting plans. So, if you are watching and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do hit that subscribe button so you too could follow and be part of this truly groundbreaking milestone ant experiment. I truly appreciate the support and cherish every sub. Alright, so before we go over the plans for this giant vivarium build, let's start from the beginning. An ecosystem vivarium. I had so many questions and lots and lots of decisions to make for such an ambitious project to work. Like, how big of a tank are we talking about? Where in my ant room would we build it? What type of habitat and design would it be? What animals and various critters would be living inside it? Would it have a complex aquatic portion to it? And of course, most important of all, what ant species and existing ant colonies of ours would be moving into the ecosystem vivarium? All of these questions burdened me night and day for a good few months. But in this video, I'll be answering and addressing all of these very important questions and going over all my plans for our great ant ecosystem vivarium. But guys, do stay tuned until the end because I will be needing your help with certain decisions, especially with deciding which of our currently existing ant colonies we will be adding into the vivarium. I want all of you to be an influential part 
of all this historic AC ant lore. Oh, and I'll also be showing you a concept sketch for what our great ecosystem vivarium might hopefully look like. So do stay tuned for all that coming up. So AC family, let's begin. Let's start with the plan, location and size. As mentioned, the ecosystem world needs to be big for it to truly work, but I needed it to be small enough that I can still get in and properly film all the action going on. So I've decided that we will need to create a floor to ceiling glass enclosure, something really tall, really wide, but something not too deep. This here is a lifeless terrarium I built using fake plants currently in my bedroom. I foresee something kind of like this, but using real plants, more soil, and a ton of animals and critters living inside it. I also need to make something much, much bigger than this for the ecosystem vivarium to actually work. Because as mentioned, a massive terrarium would allow for plenty of space for the creatures within to thrive and proliferate, hunt, escape predation, and breed, as well as for various ant colonies to establish safety zones and individual territories. So let's move on now to the ant room and talk tank size and location. Here is our ant room 2.0, a very large space to work with, which is perfect because our vivarium will truly require plenty of room. After lots of thought and consideration, I was thinking this area would be best. So guys, get this. We would simply have to relocate Volcania, our fire ant paludarium, somewhere else, perhaps uh, off to the side, and then set up our massive ecosystem vivarium here. The side of it would be pressed up against this pillar and extend all the way to the middle of the ant room. That makes the entire tank over 10 feet long. It would be as deep as the pillar, so approximately 33 inches deep, and would have upper housing for lights, as well as sit on a little riser, so we don't have to sit on the floor to watch the action, making the entire vivarium approximately six feet tall. In total, this makes the entire tank over 1,200 gallons in size. 1,200 gallons. I have never in my life built a terrarium that large, let alone a vivarium with various creatures living in it. Speaking of which, I'm sure a lot of you are now wondering, Ants Canada, what creatures will you be putting in it? Well, I'll tell you what I have in mind, but before I get to that, we have to address this very important detail first. Biome type, meaning to say, will our vivarium be a desert type habitat? A semi-aquatic marshland type world? Perhaps a grassy plains type ecosystem? Well, AC family, I've decided to go with tropical forest for our ecosystem, simply because I live in the tropics and all the ant colonies I keep are tropical ants from my yard. So it would be much easier to source the plants, ants, and cohabiting creatures that will be going into our ecosystem world than if we were to go with some other type of biome. I will simply keep adding in more and more animals and creatures over time as I find them outside to biodiversify our great vivarium. Now, one thing I wanted to address is a water feature. I do want our ultimate ecosystem vivarium to also have a water feature. But here's the thing. Originally, I delighted at the idea of an awesome waterfall feeding a cool river running through the setup and emptying into a pretty sizable pond, housing a ton of various tropical fish, beautiful aquatic plants, and other creatures, as many tropical forests do have waterfalls, ponds, rivers, marshes, etc. But the thing is, our space, though large, is still somewhat limited. And my hopes is that the vivarium will host a broad array of terrestrial species, ants and otherwise. And most of the land species I hope to add don't typically live right next to a sizable body of water and probably won't do well in soils that are overly wet either. My fear in adding a large marsh area, for instance, would definitely look really nice with lots of fish, shrimp, snails, perhaps even a newt or axolotl, but it might also be a drowning hazard for many ants and critters I'm thinking of adding in, who typically don't live that close to bodies of water. If our setup was the size of an entire room, then yes, perhaps it might be safe to add a larger aquatic area. But for our somewhat limited vivarium parameters, I foresee a ton of earthworms, ants, and other critters crawling into the water, drowning, fouling it up, 
and just causing a lot of complications. Unlike fire ants, which can form cool rafts on water and are actually quite proficient living around bodies of water, most ants do not do well living around deep water 24 seven. So I'm still undecided whether or not we should add a complex body of water in the setup. If ever, more of a little waterfall emptying into a kind of shallow puddle, a place for our ecosystem creatures to drink, or in the case of amphibians, have a good soak, but that's it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, and now it's time we go over what animals I've been hoping to add to our great ecosystem vivarium. Let's leave which ant colonies we want in for afterward. I wanted to mention my wish list for animals first, as this may or may not affect your choice regarding which ants we choose for the vivarium. Now it took me a while to come up with this list, but I think you guys will truly love it. Listen to this. First, let's start with the most basic of creatures, the soil creatures. These will be the most abundant of creatures in our ecosystem, as they play a very important role in the ecosystem world we create. Now the soil I'll be placing into our ecosystem terrarium will be bioactive, meaning it will host a plethora of living soil creatures, namely earthworms, isopods, springtails, mites, millipedes, and even land crabs. These terrestrial creatures will be important at converting decaying and organic material in our ecosystem world into valuable fertilizer for the plants of the ecosystem to thrive. Speaking of plants, as you may have guessed, I will be using a variety of tropical plants and mosses to bring life and vibrancy to the ecosystem. It will help provide cover and habitat for the array of creatures and even ants living in our ecosystem. I may also consider adding carnivorous plants, if you guys think we should add them. But what will be controlling the plant growth in our ecosystem world, you might ask? Well, herbivores. I plan on including a team of herbivorous creatures into our ecosystem world, including native crickets, forest roaches, snails, and others that I can find. These herbivores will have all the space and plant food they need to thrive and freely multiply as they would in the wild. But their populations would need to be controlled. What then would be controlling the populations of herbivores? Of course, predators. This is where things get interesting. For predators, I hope to include a team of various spider species, centipedes, maybe a mantis, toads or frogs, geckos, possibly native agamid or skink lizards, and of course, the ultimate stars of our ecosystem world and of this channel, ants. And so AC family, now that you know the parameters we're working with, the time has come for all of you watching to be part of this channel's history and ant lore, to choose what species of ants we will be moving into our vivarium. So please listen carefully, because I'll be explaining why I think each ant species and colony may or may not be a good fit for our ecosystem. I'll be asking you to give me your preferred ant species list as a comment in this video at the end. So, you can start a working ant list now as a comment, then hit send by the end of the video to post it for me and everyone else to see in the comment section. Feel free to also give your reasons on why you choose the ant species you did for our ecosystem vivarium. Seeing all your feedback will surely help me decide as you guys never fail to have brilliant ideas and input on this channel. Sound good? Now, I should mention that our goal should be to choose ant species that will not undoubtedly annihilate each other, but hopefully coexist together. And by coexist, I don't exactly mean hold hands and sing kumbaya, forming peaceful alliances, though if that did happen, that would surely be cool to see but rather establish clear territorial boundaries and foraging trails within the ecosystem that the colonies will simply defend as they would in the wild and not go into full-out war over. In nature, ants encounter other species of ants all the time and don't end up going to war with each other as this would be costly both energy-wise and worker force-wise. I think we should try our best to choose ants that occupy different niches within the habitat for instance, trap jaw ants nest in soil, and the chances that they would end up going to war with arboreal ants that nest high up in the wood, like our chromatogaster ants, is pretty slim. 
because they just don't nest in the same type of space. So, in choosing the ant species, guys, I hope to limit the amount of ant species that nest in the same niche to simply one or two ant species max. Cool? Alright, here we go. First, let's start with soil-dwelling ants. I have a few in mind that I think would make great residents within our tropical forest ecosystem. The trapjaw ants, whom we have recently named the snapdragons. This colony has been thriving in their current setup for years now. The colony is composed of several thousand ants, but within our large ecosystem, I don't think they're big enough to completely dominate all the soils from the get-go, which is good. My hunch is they will claim a large chunk of soil, perhaps under some large driftwood or rock, and simply grow steadily outward from there. They're also amazing ants to watch and hunt living prey. So I think our trap jaw ants would make epic additions to our ecosystem. If you think the snapdragons would make worthy additions to our ecosystem tank, add them to your official ant species list entry now in the comments. Next, our spades our cute Moranoplus bicolor ant colony, a species dear to us. As we were the first in the world to discover they existed in my country of residence, they've been completely thriving in their new open concept bowl terrarium I placed them in. And though they also nest in soil, I think simply due to their smaller size, ferocity, and protective spiny hairs, they won't be in too much danger if they ever come face to face with the trap giants. This is my educated guess anyway. What do you guys think? If you feel the spades should be added into the vivarium, add them to your official ant species list entry now in the comments. In terms of our Dracula ants, I actually prefer not to add this colony because I'm still trying to film the process of the workers drinking the blood of their larvae for scientific purposes. And if we add our Dracula ants into the mix, they'd surely disappear into the darkness of the soils. And I won't be able to do that. Perhaps if I find another Dracula ant colony, I'll consider it. But for now, no on the Draculas. Sorry guys. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. Fire ants. And to this I say a flat out no. I don't want to include fire ants into our ecosystem because as they normally do in real ecosystems, they become totally invasive and throw off the ecological balance of competing, displacing, and even killing other terrestrial ant colonies. Remember that our aim here is to establish an ecological balance of sorts, not a stark plot of earth ruled by one dominating ant species. Adding fire ants into our ecosystem would be a terrible mistake, in my opinion. Same goes for our black crazy ants. They would totally wipe out the setup clean of life. Non-negotiable, they aren't going in. Sorry fire ant and black crazy ant fans. But what about the fire ants native counterparts, our marauder ants? named the Leviathans. Yes, we could add them to our ecosystem, and they are native ants. However, our Leviathans are just so big and powerful that they would surely wipe out all prey insects within the ecosystem enclosure, as well as any and all soil-dwelling ant species. If the ecosystem enclosure was as big as a room, maybe that could work, but for our current plan, I don't think the Leviathans would be a good fit for our ecosystem world. Sorry, Leviathan fans. All right, now let's move on to another niche, wood-dwelling ants. I have some carpenter ants that would truly make great additions to the ecosystem. I have a very active and exploding colony of a yellowish-orange species of carpenter ants, as well as a large black species, both currently living in an AC test tube, AC test tube portal starting setup from AntsCanada.com. Both colonies are just about ready to take their next step and be moved into a larger home. I believe with enough rotting wood slung all over the vivarium, we just might be able to house both species of these carpenter ant colonies in our ecosystem world. Again, this is just a guess, and I'm not 100% sure it would work. We could err on the side of caution and only put one carpenter ant colony in, but let me know in your species list if you feel one or both carpenter ant colonies, or none, should be moved into our vivarium. Another ant that lives in wood that I think could share the niche amicably with the carpenter ants are our unidentified chromatogaster ants that currently reside on an open concept island 
This species is also of scientific significance because they just might be a brand new undiscovered species. Still waiting for the results, but due to their tiny size, I think they could be added to our ecosystem too. Choosing wood unoccupied by carpenterants without problems. Let me know in your species list in the comments. Our Blades of Midas, our huge polyrachis ant colony, who create debris nests among wooden structures, could also be added to our ecosystem. But they're truly a big colony, and I'm unsure how they would do in our vivarium. I suspect they may or may not go to war with carpenter ants, sharing the branches, but would definitely win if it ever happened, simply due to the numbers game. So I'm inclined to say no to the polyrachis, just to err on the side of caution. Sorry about that, Blades of Midas fans. Now, AC family, there is one other species of ant that I'm unsure would work, but in my mind, could. You see, it's one of my favorite ant species of all. And if the ecosystem is designed correctly, these ants just might actually work. But this brings me to my biggest question of all for you guys. Do we add an apex predator ant species to our ecosystem? Asian weaver ants, perhaps one of the most powerful predatory native ants of the tropical ecosystems they're part of. Certainly the apex native ant predators in my yard, if added to our tropical forest world, would nest within the leaves of any tree or bush we place into our ecosystem, but would forage for their food at all levels of the tank, from the highest of treetops to the soils. I currently don't have a weaver ant colony in the ant room, but we can certainly collect one from any of the trees in my yard. But my fear is if the weaver ant colony gets too powerful, they could totally wipe out all prey insects, as well as predators, including lizards, and possibly all other ant colonies within the system. Nothing really would be safe from a massive and ravenous weaver ant colony foraging all corners of the tank. But what if we added a young weaver ant colony with just a few thousand workers? Would a young weaver ant colony be of danger to the system? Where some workers fall victim to biological population regulators like predators? I actually don't know. Here's where I would love to hear your opinions though. I'm totally okay with not adding weavers to the ecosystem too. Let me know your thoughts in your species list. All right guys, and these are my initial plans for our ultimate ecosystem terrarium. You can now hit send on your recommended ant species list comment so I can see what you guys think. In terms of this whole ecosystem vivarium project, it's definitely ambitious. But if we can get this ecological experiment to work, it would definitely shed new light on how our ant colonies live in the wild. Because for the first time, we'll be able to watch the ants living with the plethora of interconnected species of creatures and plants with which they share their habitat. It would be a true milestone in the husbandry of ant keeping and an interesting experiment to watch play out. I know, with your help, we can pull this off together. Do let me know if you have any other ideas for our ecosystem that I may not have covered. I didn't want to start building our vivarium without hearing ideas from you guys first. A team has already come into the ant room to make initial measurements in order to start manufacturing the glass and parts needed to make this project happen. It will surely take time to have it done right. So I don't want to rush things. And I want this ecosystem world to be a collaborative project with all of you, the AC family who have over the years walked an incredible journey of nature discovery with me. And again, hopefully somewhere along this ecosystem world building journey, we will have hit the big 5M subs. And when we do, I have something very special planned. So again, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with all your friends and family to get them involved as well in this ultimate ecosystem world creation. I know deep inside, this will be the greatest of ant worlds we'll have ever created. I can't wait to see how it all comes together. In part two, after I've heard your feedback on what ants we're putting in, we shall begin with our next step, which is to lay the foundations for the vivarium build. This will require plenty of thought and preparation, but trust me on this, it will be so fun. Until then, thank you all for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever. Oh, I almost forgot. My sketch. Here's what I hope our vivarium will look like. What do you think?
Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.